Well, for more on this now, Ken Blackwell, a senior fellow at the Family Research Council. He's also the former mayor of Cincinnati, a former secretary of state of Ohio, and a former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. Human Rights Commission. Also with us, chairman of conservativehq.com, Richard Vigory. Gentlemen, welcome to Newsmax Prime. Pleasure. All right, Ken, let's start with you. Are Donald Trump's comments red meat for the base, yet are they still turning off maybe the rest of the nation, maybe those folks who aren't firmly entrenched in Trump's camp? You know, at Xavier University, uh, we, in our philosophy and theology classes, talked about two principles that he totally violated, even in, in war, and that is proportionality and intentionality. Uh, you don't say that you're going to intentionally uh, take out innocence. Uh, and two, the, the question of proportionality is always a presidential uh, d decision. Uh, I, I think he, 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 he might not have hurt himself, uh, but that was by no means presidential. And it can be a little scary uh, when uh, those two principles, even in war, are violated. Well, Richard, we know there is this appeal to Donald Trump because he's not a member of the D.C. elite. But can he, you know, ever unite the entire party when saying those comments if they are unpresidential, as Ken indicated? Well, it's, uh, you know, I agree with everything that Ken said, of course. Uh, and I think as you pile one more extreme, uh, outrageous uh, statement on top of another, at some point uh, the, the building block begins to, uh, to fall apart. And I think it's uh, much more than just these uh, uh, outrageous statements uh, that are causing a disunity in the party. You know, the uh, Republican Party for, gosh, 25 or more years has been in violation of the Bible, which says, as Lincoln as well, uh, Lincoln told us a house divided not, cannot stand. The Bible tells us a house divided cannot stand. The Republican Party has been a house divided for 25, 30 years. And Donald Trump will split the party apart in a way that uh, it uh, will be a disaster come November 9, 2016. Uh, so uh, a lot of things Republicans need going into this election on a short list. Uh, they must be united. And Donald Trump uh, will contribute nothing to that. He'll be very divisive, I'm afraid. We talked about this a lot, too, after the it's nomination just, I, of Mitt Romney in his ability to unite the entire GOP. But there's one candidate in that poll who's surging right now, and that's Marco Rubio. And he might have the best ability to unite the base. What do you think about that, Ken? Well, I, I, think, I think he's surging. I think Ted Cruz is surging. Uh, and this could pan out to be a, a, a race between uh, Rubio and Cruz. But I want to go back and underscore something on, 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 on Trump. You know, we are dealing right now with an imperial president, somebody that views himself beyond the Constitution. Uh, there are other things that Donald Trump has said that uh, suggest to me that the uh, Constitution, in his view, is malleable uh, to, the, to the whims and, and ideas and desires of a President Trump. And that is something that concerns me. I know it concerns uh, Richard, uh, we are constitutional conservatives, uh, and, and that's the threat that I see uh, mounting in, in the Trump campaign, that he's going to have to tap down uh, and, 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 as, and assage those uh, concerns. Yeah, we already have a president who believes the Constitution is pretty malleable as it is. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, a theory out there swirling around that maybe Marco Rubio and John Kasich are working behind the scenes together. Of course, Kasich has been the most aggressive as of late, trying to take on Donald Trump with a series of ads. His super PAC has jumped in on that as well. Uh, are you guys, would you guys be excited about the prospect of a Rubio Kasich ticket that could win both Florida? and Ohio. Go ahead, Richard. Well, that doesn't unite the party. Uh, right now, for all practical purposes, you've got a three-way race between Trump, Rubio, and Cruz. I think uh, uh, Ken was very correct. Uh, Rubio is surging, but so is Cruz. Uh, and I think at the end of the uh, campaign, so to speak, March, April, you're going to see it as a two-way person race between uh, Cruz and Rubio. And remember, uh, uh, Rubio is the establishment candidate. 
uh, Kasich is the establishment candidate. So you put two establishment candidates out there, and there is about 25, 30 percent of the Republican voters usually support the establishment candidate in primaries. So how does that unite the party? I mean, the conservatives, once again, representing about 70 percent of the uh, base of the Republican Party, is left out in the cold. And we saw that was the case in uh, 1996 with, with Dole, and uh, in 2008 with McCain, 2012 with Romney. And at some point, the Republican Party has to realize the base of the party is the conservatives, and we're not a wing of the party. We're not an element uh, of the party. We are the party. We are the, the so, element. So Richard, we're maybe, the base of the party. Maybe it's a Cruz and Rubio ticket. What do you think about that? Well, the, that's a very uh, distinct possibility. What about you, Ken? Like, what do you think uh, about that ticket? I think I think that's a, a, a possibility, and, it, and I think it would excite more the base than the, the previous t ticket that you that you mentioned. Uh, I think right now, uh, unfortunately, the only uh, block of voters that seem to be excited with Kasich is uh, the commentators on MSNBC. All right. Well, you know, in that same Quinnipiac poll we talked about earlier with Miranda, Hillary Clinton defeats just about every Republican candidate. Is that because of the tone and the rhetoric used by Republicans going up against each other? This has been a pretty brutal campaign season. Ken, go ahead. Well, you know, I, I, I think at, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, this is a, a competition. It's for not only who's going to be the standard bearer, but who's going to be the leader of the, of the free world. Uh, and while we want them all to stay within the, the bounds of uh, appropriate political etiquette, uh, this is not being bagged. It's going to be a uh, hardball and uh, the stakes are high and, and therefore uh, we constantly have to be vigilant and they have to understand that stepping outside of the bounds of what is appropriate, what is proportional, uh, what is uh, polite uh, political etiquette uh, is uh, something that a lot of voters take into consideration when pulling the lever or punching yeah. the car. John, at this stage, it's mo uh, these polls mostly represent name ID, and Hillary's yeah. got uh, the best name ID out there for the last 25, 30 years. So uh, the campaign hasn't really started. I think her negatives are so high that uh, you'll see uh, her, uh, you know, uh, struggling to get to 45 percent once this campaign starts. That's a key point there. Interesting to note the uh, trustworthiness of both Trump and Hillary Clinton not looking so good in that Quinnipiac poll. That probably has a lot to do with name recognition. People have heard of them. That may be why they're selecting them, but do they trust them? That's the real question. Ken Blackwell, Richard Vigory, a pleasure, gentlemen. Thanks for being here on Newsmax Prime. My pleasure. All right, we want to hear from you. Send us your comments. You can reach us at NewsmaxTV.com. Slash comments. Again, that's NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Coming up, which GOP candidate match up, matches up best against Hillary Clinton? Ed Klein thinks he knows. He'll join us coming up next when Newsmax Prime continues.